All right, so I wanted to talk some more about this campus map. We, we did some refactoring in class last week, and I did some more yesterday. So the first thing I did was we created, I created this method called create tile view. And this, this is a method that I pass the original size, height, and width of the big image. And then the folder where I find those particular files and the down samples folder. So that in my assets, I've got a down samples for the, my main campus map. And then I've got a down samples for building one. So those are two places. And then I've got a, a tiles for, the, these are all the campus map tiles at the different sizes. And this is tiles for building one. All right, so what that does is it returns a tile view object after it creates all the stuff. So I could then just call this create tile view for all of the buildings that I wanted to have and store each one of them. So that was pretty nice. So what I passed in was the size and the folder names. And then I used that to create the new tile view and, and set all the detail level because this was all kind of redundant code. And I added an event listener for each tile view object and then I return the tile view here. All right, so that was one step that I made. Um, any questions on that? Oh, true. So, and and I think that that messed me up a little bit. I switched from using pings to gifs because they're they're smaller uh, for the maps that we're using. So we could pass in an extension string here and replace all of these guys. So you're just adding up a bunch of strings together. That would be good. Good idea. All right. So that fixed a, a lot. Then what I add, so then what I added, and I'll show you the code here. When I get to my map, um, let me go back, come into the map. I think I still have some bugs there. So I go into my map. I've got my my map here that I can scroll around. I've got my spinner that lets me choose uh, particular areas on the map. Building 15, building 50. Um, then if I select building one and I go into building one, if I click on my little marker, it brings up a different tile view that I had created. It swaps out the tile view so that I can scroll in and around that view. And then I, I could have different rooms in here that go to different places. So my spinner would change based on what building I have. But I always needed a top level campus map to go back. So I click campus map and it swaps out the views again so that I can see that's where I came from was building one. So that works pretty good. Um, except I think I still have some bugs here. If I select campus map at this level, it's supposed to bring me to the, uh, the zoomed out version of this, to this level. And it, it didn't quite do that. So I've got a bug in there still. So to do that, I added this concept of a current view. So I added a current tile view that's just a, a variable to hold a pointer to one of these tile views that I created. So it's just a variable that points to one of the other two real tile views. So I'm, I'm not creating a tile view. I'm setting my current tile view to be either this one or equal to this one. So when I first create this, uh, I set my current tile view to the tile view, which is this is the campus map tile view. So that's my current view. And then I add that to my layout, the current view. Then if they switch based on a spinner, if they switch, I come down here to my uh, position map that eventually gets called. And I'm switching out. Uh, I remove the current tile view. I then uh, add the tile view back in to the layout based on which one they switched from. So I, I checked to see if my 
uh, spinner was equal to campus map. If it is, then I'm going to go to the campus map no matter where they are. And I have this campus map item in all of my spinners, all of my selection boxes. Uh, then, so when I'm creating my spinners, I need to have a spinner adapter for each level. So this is a spinner adapter for my top level campus map that lets me sh see the various buildings that I've cored that I have coordinates for. Well, I have to have a I have to have this adapter that. Yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't put it in the base activity because no other activity is going to use this. No, I mean this is this is the pull down menu that only shows up on my map activity, so it doesn't make sense. All right, so so this is creating a new building object, and I added a, a zoom in level as well to my building object. So I create these different building places, and I set that one into my view. Then I create another one for a specific building one. So this is building one's. Uh, spinner that will be swapped out when I go into the detail on that one. So I've got two spinners. Now the problem with this is, uh, and this is what we played around with yesterday, the uh, as you load up a spinner, it takes the first item in the spinner and calls your callback function um, on item selected for that first item, no matter what. Just putting it on the view calls this listener object. So that's kind of a pain. So the problem is I put my campus map as the first item on both spinners. So when I swap them out, it switched to campus map, which in my logic switched the spinner back to the top campus map, which ran the campus map again, and it went in an infinite loop always running the callback because that's the first item. So what you have to do is pay attention to where, which one you're setting it to. So I have this, uh, there's a method for my spinners, where is it? That lets me set a particular selection. So when I add the spinner to the, to the screen, to the layout, I set its, uh, selection to not be the first one, so, so it chooses some other one. And so, and going backwards, I did the same thing. I had to do this set selection here as well. And that's a zero-based item. So you have to pay attention to this infinite loop. So you go more than what you selection? No, I just chose one that was the one I was on. Um, like in, in here, when they select building one, um, and I go into building one, this is the one that comes up, and I select room 1103 instead of campus map. Because if I chose campus map, it would switch me back again to this one. It's a weird way to do it. It, it worked. It fixed it. Um, there's probably other ways to do that, obviously. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it programmatically calls that too many times. All right. So any questions on that little reformatting there, refactoring? That's not too bad. You could add a lot more to your building. I was going to add some things. I could even add uh, my spinner. I don't know. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. See, what I don't get is uh, should, you, should you be able to add that spinner to like, some other class or something? Because a lot of that's redundant. The building one, the That's not redundant. Yeah. I only have that once. You have that in the, when you put your markers down. No. Well, that's because I haven't refactored this yet. I could just as well use a building building array sub 1 dot x and y here. I just didn't do that. That's what I ended up Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That, that, that's redundant only on the marker piece here. 
So I, I would probably create an array of these outside of this and save that so that I could use it in here and uh, here where I set the, uh, the marker. A lot of work. A lot of work to add a database. All right, so that's pretty close to what you guys have. Um, it uh, lets me go into a building and back out of a building. So the issue I'm with that, if you actually do do something like this, you're going to have so much. You're going to have uh, all the rooms. Yeah. It's a lot of data. How else are you going to do it? you got to have all that data. I don't know how else you're going to do it. You just make these maps as small as possible. But you've got to have the data somewhere. All right. So I wanted to show, remember that also, any, any other questions on that before we move on? My little refactoring. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and that's what that's what Ryan was saying. I could have all of these in a database, and I could have a database of. Well, I'm not sure I would have a database of the images. No, I don't think so. I've got to have the images here for my tile view to work. So I might as well use them. Oh, I see the problem now with my. No, that's a different thing. Sorry. Never mind. But where, where you actually put that, uh, that tile name, like the uh, drop, drop sample 001? Zero, zero, These? No. When you're actually called up above 134. These? Those, you save that in the database. Because that's all you really. Maybe. The other stuff you don't. Maybe. The tile but it is a finite map. I mean, the, there's only so many buildings, True. so it's not, you know, it's and and it's not something that changes daily. They're not going to move building 16 very often, so it's not something you have to change very often. <laughs> so, all right. I wanted to go. Let's move on to the uh, the Google Play services and remember that Jenny Motion. This was. Uh, this works if I plug it into a real uh, device. This was going out and getting a map and displaying it. Remember that with the Google Play services? The problem is that Jenny Motion has no license with Google to distribute their APK for this. That's why they took it out. They used to have it, and Google got on them and said, stop. So they're in licensing uh, war or whatever you want to call it with Google to try to get this back onto their system. So in order for us to see this on the virtual device, we have to add the Google Play services manually. But we can do that. So let's show you how to do that. I found a tutorial that uh, does that really nicely. And it is at blog.zsonline.com. So Jenny Motion should put it on that. It's just make it really easy for you to put it on. Right. <laughs> All right. So at this address, how come that came up? Ha! Google crashed. Nice. I've never seen Google crash before. And I got it on film. <laughs> <laughs> so let's relaunch. Come on. I'm going to pop. Okay, I restarted Google. I mean uh, Chrome. So this this is a little tutorial at this blog.zsonline.com slash 2013 slash 11 slash install dash Google dash play dash on dash Jenny Motion dash 2 dash oh, wow, that's a long name. Why do they have such a long name while I'm here? No, they did that on purpose.
don't have a reason. Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization, because the link is indexed by Google, and I'm adding keywords into the link itself. And it's free keywords that I don't have to have on my page. They're nice. So um, Jenny Motion no longer comes with the Google APIs, so you can't even go to the Play Store to download an app on this virtual machine. And that's the problem. So what we have to do is download the Google apps. And they have these packages that I can download. And I want uh, this, this one here. This is for APKs up to 4.3, which is what I want. And they've got Google Play services and store and search and maps and everything is in here. So I need to download this file. And that's just a zip file. I don't know. I lost it. So this will download in a second. Waiting, waiting. They want you to read their little stuff here. All right, so I downloaded this zip file. And we'll find it in my downloads folder. And all you have to do, if you go back to here, is drag it on top of your virtual machine. So I got my virtual machine here. I've got my zipped file. I drag it over here. And it says file transfer. So it copies the file. And then the Android OS says, oh, that's a zip file. Do you want to uncompress it? It should come over here and says, ah, that seems to be a flashable archive. So do you want to flash it? Yes. It might corrupt to the virtual device. I don't care. So we say, OK. And it's going to. Uh, reset that. Um, and then we have to reboot the virtual device. And it says in the tutorial you're going to get a lot of these errors. So we don't care. It got an error. Uh, we just need to reboot the device, which I'm going to use this power off here. <laughs> and power it on again. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to boot it harder than that. I'm going to close out the virtual machine and play it again from Jenny Motion. Pretty easy. So then uh, after you've restart the device, you might get some more of these. We then have to add a Google account just like it was, it was your phone. And then it's going to upgrade all of the apps that are on here. So did I hit play? What's going on here? Unable to start. All right, so it wants VirtualBox started. So that sometimes has to do that. Yeah, how come I got two of them now? Close that one. So it says uh, Android is upgrading. So it's booting up. No pause. All right, so it finally uh, rebooted. And I get these errors. Google Plus has stopped. That's fine. But we can go to our settings and create, if you look at this, uh, you can open up the Play Store and add an account. All right, so let's go find the Play Store. See, it's all here now. Google Play Store. Do you want to add an account? I've got an existing account. So I'm going to put my existing account in here. Nope. 
that. That's not mine. You can, can't you? So I'm not going to use this to back up, fine, whatever. And it crashes a lot. But eventually, once I get to upgrade, um, it will... I want to update all of these guys. No, I think it will work on the other two. But why would I use the other? Just doesn't make sense. I can get this to work. It's worth the headache. This Jenny motion is worth the headache. And it's getting better. There we go. So it updated its its stuff, and now it won't crash nearly as much. Um, and I should be able to load my health app now and go to my Google map, update Google Play services. OK, well, let's update our Google Play services update. <coughs> All right, successfully updated. <laughs> go back. Ah. Well, I have a bug now somewhere else, but it uh, it at least is creating the uh, the map. Uh, it's getting past that that error, so I've got a problem here somewhere. But that's how that's pretty easy to upgrade. And now I've got Google Play. I can add apps to my uh, my uh, virtual device. Anything I want now is is ready to go. Isn't that nice? that nice? You still get a few errors here, but it's uh, all right. Any other any questions on that? All right, I'm going to stop and let's see if we can figure out 